Today we're going to talk about something a little bit different from normal. A lot of people have been asking how to use different graphical user interfaces or GUIs with their printer. And most of the time I show you how to use Pronterface because in the interface it allows you to get replies back from the printer software. Today I'm going to show you something different with Cura. Cura will not reply back, but you can use it for rendering and sending to a local printer on your network. This uh, will not allow you to use things like Octoprint with Cura, but you can use that separately, but I'm going to show you with the printer today. So I'm going to show you where to download it. So we'll do a search on Cura download if I can spell and what we have here is the Cura website for software so you're gonna click on software and then we're gonna to go to version 4.8 then we're gonna say download for free and we're gonna select the altar maker for Cura for Windows. And then we're going to say download now. Now this may take a few moments as it's kind of a large file. It's about 158 megabytes. And as soon as this is downloaded, what we'll do is we'll map to the download folder with this over here. And we'll open that up. But uh, as you all know, when I actually work with the printer, I'm using Pronterface, and the rationale behind it is so that you can actually get feedback back from your printer. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. So I'm going to go to my print run directory and open Pronterface while this is downloading. And I'm going to connect to the printer I have locally connected. And as you can see, it says the printer is now online. And if I were to type in something like M119 and press enter for my end stop set status, you would see that the X minimum, the Y minimum, and the Z minimum all show their status of either open or triggered. This cannot be done in Cura. So if you're seeing something wrong with your printer, you're going to have to go over to Pronterface and do the exact same setup. And if you don't see it here, the other place that you will see it is if you go to settings debug communications this will turn on debugging and show you what's occurring on your actual printer so right now what it's doing is it's saying what temperature is it and right now it's telling you the temperature for the different things that are connected let's go back to the web browser and see if that's completed which it has and we'll do a show in folder and then I'm going to click on it or double click on it to install it. So now it's going to ask me if I want to install it. I have an old version already, so I'm going to say yes. Then I'm going to uninstall that old version. And so I'm going to remove it. This is going to take a few moments more. And as soon as this is complete, we can close it. And it will actually install the current version. We have to agree to the end user agreement. And then we're going to say next again, then next again, then install. So this may take a few moments to install, but if you want to see the details of the install, you can always click over here. And this will show you what's occurring with the actual install. So right now it's doing a lot of DLLs which are dynamically linked libraries and now I can't read it because it's moving a little too fast for my eyes but needless to say it's going to install any second so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over to Pronterface right now and I'm going to turn off debugging because I don't usually use it too often and I'm actually going to disconnect from the printer so that I can connect in Pronterface so I'm going to close this out and as you can see, we're almost done with the actual install. So let's give that a moment more to run.
Okay, now that it's finished, we're going to actually let it run automatically. So we're going to click on finish. Now this may take a second to start, as you can see. Now it's going to ask you if you can have access be allowed. So allow access. And so I'm going to close this out. I'm actually going to maximize this so you can see what I'm doing. And it's going to say get started. So in get started, it's going to ask you to sign up for the agreement. So you're going to agree to that. Then you're going to say next, next. And then we're going to skip the actual account creation and just go directly into Cura. So it's going to ask us what printer we're currently working with. So a lot of people out there are currently using Cura. So what you can do is you actually can scroll down here and there's something for Creality, which is located right here. And you can choose the printer that you're most commonly using. In this case, I'm going to go with the Creality Ender 3 Pro. And then I'm going to say Next. And what it will show you is the number of actual millimeters of length for your X, your Y, your Z. So these are already known by the software. So if you were to do something that was custom, you would have to change these. So we're going to leave them all the same. Down here we have what's known as G codes. So if we were to click on this field, we could see what actually happens for your start G code. So I'm going to copy these and I'm going to go over to notepad to show you a couple of what they are. So I'm going to start a new file real quick here. And as you can see, here are the G codes. So it says reset the extruder is the first G code. Then it says home all axi or axes. In this case, that would be X, Y, and Z going to their zero starting point. And that goes on from there. So as you can see, that's not very interesting, but at least you know what's occurring. Now, if we were to highlight this and delete it for a second and then go back over to here, we could actually see what the NG codes are by copying those. And as you can see, it has a couple of weird things, but the most important thing that it has is it's turning off everything when the print has completed. So you don't want to really change this because why run the heat after your printer has completed? It's safer to turn everything off. So let's go back over to this and click next because all of these values are going to be default and your extruder is going to be default as well to 1.75 millimeters. And of course you can add more start and NG codes here, which I don't understand, but okay. And then you have your environment. Now, currently we don't have anything loaded. So let's see if we can find a STL on my computer. So I've got a 20 millimeter cube that I can bring into here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna open the path to that cube to see what it is. So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna open the file location. So I'm going to drag this over here and now we have our cube on what would be our print bed. Now you can rotate this by holding the right mouse button to rotate it in different directions. You can also click on it and move it with the arrows. The other thing that you can do is if you so feel in inclined is you can actually rotate it with these. So you can click on it and you could actually turn it and make it print this way if you wanted. But that's for other models that you're going to be working with. This one, it's not that important. So I'm going to rotate that back down to the zero position, hopefully. Apparently, I'm not having a good time with it. So I'm going to click on this button. 
and see if I can flatten it. There we go. So I was able to flatten it into position. Now over here, we actually have different settings that we can set. So as you can see right now, there are different profiles. You can do 0.12 degrees of step. You can do 0.16. You can do 0 0.20. 0.28 and then nothing above that so they keep you somewhat restricted technically you might be able to go higher in other printer softwares that do slicing but in this case they limit you to a small range then they have infill which is 20 percent and that's usually the default for almost every single print that you'll do there's rarely a time you need to go above that and then they have a checkbox for support material. So I'll show you an example of what support material looks like. If I were to click on this and I were to turn this back up to the angle, we'll say, so you can see like right here, let's turn that angle up so it's more dramatic. So like that, it would have a hard time printing. So it would need support material. So you would click this. And then in order to see the support material, you might be able to click on preview, but currently preview is not showing you very much. So click on slice, and then you can see the actual support material that occurs with that print. Now, as you can see over here, it says save to removable drive. You can do that if you want, or you can even click over here and then you can print via USB. But what I normally do is I slice it here, copy out the G code that it creates, being the file that tells the printer how to move. And then usually I paste it into something like Octoprint. So let's see if, uh, well, I'll show you Octoprint some other time because that's gonna take a little bit too much time. But I'll show you what the local print environment looks like. Now, as you can see right here, you can actually send a G code so let's try sending a G code to the printer, M119, and then press enter. Now we've sent it, but we don't actually get a response back telling us what the state of the actual end stops are. That's because they filter that out. So what you could do is you could type, I don't know, G28 and see if all your axi actually home. And you'll know this by the actual movement of your printer. Now mine is currently homing as we're speaking. So it does work. It's just you're not going to see a response. So that's basically how it operates. And G28 was actually this command right here for both the X, Y, and Z that I sent to the printer. It also tells you what your current temperature on your extruders are and then your build plate. So it does show you the feedback graphically, but it won't tell you anything else. So one of the questions that I did receive from a viewer, they were curious on how to actually create a printer that has multiple extruders. And as you might have guessed, if you've been watching my Discord channel, I've been talking about it a little bit around the edges. I'm actually working on a printer that I'm going to show you how to modify in order to do multiple colors. That will be coming in the next couple of weeks. I'm still working out issues with the extruder. Apparently, the extruder that I purchased is not very reliable, so I'll tell you about that in the video when it actually occurs. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you how to create another printer. So if you click over here and you want to add a printer, when you go to add a new network, or excuse me, a new printer, you can say, let's say add a printer. And this is non-networked. And what we're looking for in this list is actually the custom section, which is right here. So I'm gonna click on custom. We're gonna call the printer for the moment, custom FFF printer. And we're gonna say add. And then in here, what we're going to do is actually leave these two alone for the actual start codes. 
We're going to say that it's the same size as the build plate for the Creality. So it'll be 230 by 230 by 250. And as you can see, the build plate is forming in the background behind here as we're doing this. But now we have the part where it says number of extruders. We're going to be doing multiple extruders. So I'm going to show you two to start with. You could probably figure out from there what to do. But now we have two extruders. So what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to click on the first extruder. And as you can see, the nozzle size is 0.4, which is what we're going to be working with. But our actual compatible material, we're going to change that to 1.75 for the filament. And then we're going to do the same over here of 1.75. That will take care of both our extruders. Now there is a change that you may need to make in here. So when I showed you this earlier, in Notepad, what I was showing you was the actual end codes. So the end code currently does not show us that it's turning off everything. So you're going to have to add those in per what you find in the other combination of the Cura end codes that we went over before. It's basically turning off your heat bed and both your extruders. This is a step you should not or never forget to set. So I've emphasized it a lot. It's for your safety and the safety of those around you. So please follow that advice. So I'm going to click next. And as you can see now, we've actually generated a custom printer right here. And it's got two generic PLAs. You can actually change these to other types of PLA if you so choose. But for now, we're just going to stick with the generic. And this will be a primer for the video that I will be doing. Now, for all of those out there that have uh, been kind enough to tip me on PayPal or purchase something on Amazon, I'm greatly thankful that you did. In the future, if people want to see them at the end of the video, when they do send a PayPal tip in, please specify that you're okay with me using your name and I will display it in the credits at the end of the tutorial. So thank you very much for your time and have a nice day.